Hello, we're going to be looking at 6.1 and 6.2 during this session. We have moved really into some algebra-oriented things. For some of you, you probably will find that to be a relief, and others of you probably don't like it. That's the way it often goes in algebra. But I am going to do a recording of two sessions, and so you may want to stop, as always, and just kind of do the homework one at a time. Um, so as we go through this, first of all, um, Algebraic expressions have variables in them. So this is where you're introducing X and Y or any other letters that we have. And they usually have some things that look like math in them also, like plus, minus, or multiplication, division, square roots, anything like that. Um, it, what they don't have, if you have an algebraic expression, it does not have an equal sign in it because the moment you put an equal, then you have an equation. So an algebraic expression looks like uh, an algebra equation, but there's no equal sign. It's just kind of one side. We have to use orders of operations. So orders of operations, something you may be familiar with from a previous class, it's often evaluated or shortcut is PEMDAS. As we look at PEMDAS, um, what happens is that we can, uh, and let me just kind of highlight, we have, uh, or if I could get that to come up, we have parentheses which is our P, and so we deal with parentheses first, and then the E is exponents. MD, multiplication and division from left to right as they occur. So even though you have to say it twice, you can't say multiplication and division at the same time. It's not possible. Um, they, they still happen on one step. And the same thing is with addition and subtraction. So I'm going to put this up here just maybe in another little thing. So we often say operations, order of operations, refers to PEMDAS, kind of just an acronym to help you remember that. But there's parentheses, exponents, multiplication and division is one step, and it goes from left to right. Addition and subtraction is one step, and it goes from left to right. So there's really four steps involved here. OK, and it does does kind of point out if you have a large algebra fraction, then you can essentially treat it as if this is the last sentence in step one. Act as if the numerator and the denominator had parentheses. Those are kind of a grouping symbol. So those ha you have to deal with those uh, as if it were parentheses. Order of operations, PEMDAS. So let's use uh, that order of operations here, but notice it says evaluate. So evaluate is like when you plug it in. So what we're going to do is take the 6, and I'm going to essentially then take the 6 and take that and replace the X in here with that. Now I'm actually going to split my screen here because I can write, even though it's the same person writing, I can write better on this whiteboard for whatever reason. It just seems to um, read my writing better. So I'll copy this over here. We have 7 plus 5 parentheses. Now instead of x, though, I'm going to put 6 because I'm substituting and replacing that x with 6. Minus 4, close parentheses, cubed. Now, order of operations says parentheses, so I'm going to deal with that part, part first. And even though I could do several bits of this at once, I'm going to do each step according to my operations. 6 minus 4 is 2. Now, second thing on order of operations is exponents. So I need to take care of this 2 cubed. So that's going to be 7 plus 5 times, and then 2 to the third, 2 times 2 is 4 times another 2 is 8. Then, even though I start with 7, order of operations says you have to do multiplication and division on the third step. So I've got 7 plus, and that's 5 times 8 is 40. And then I have 47 when I complete. Um, complete that. So that's using order of operations to evaluate. Now, each of the things in an algebraic expression has its own word, and it's not like you're going to get 
ask to write down these definitions anywhere, but it's so that you can know what we're talking about when we refer to them. A term is the part that gets separated, and this is separated by addition, but the truth is it could be separated, um, <coughs> excuse me, by addition or subtraction. Except for the reason they don't say that is because uh, they want the minus to be part of the term. So there's a term, here's a term, and then the third term is this minus three or negative three. So they really want you to think about it that is seven X plus a negative nine Y, but you don't see that plus, you're seeing the subtraction sign. Now, a coefficient is like the big number in front um, of the term. So we have 7 and negative 9. Constants are plain old numbers. They don't change what they equal, so they equal the same thing constantly. So our constant here is negative 3. And like terms are the parts that have the same kind of variables. So an x could be like another term that has an x, but 7x is not like 3x squared because if you have an x squared, the only like term is something else that has an x squared. And then factors are parts of terms that are multiplied. So again, it's just whether or not you need to know those terms and us being able to talk about the math. It helps us talk about it. So we're gonna do several more evaluate problems. So I'm gonna go back over here to my whiteboard. Um, I'll actually enlarge it a little bit just so I can uh, write more on it, and then we will first of all drag that part, uh, not that particular one, but let me drag that out of sight. Okay, so here we go. We're going to take this. Now, when it says evaluate, evaluate really just kind of means plug it in and get the answer. So this is the way your homework is written. The part right after that uh, semicolon says x equals tells you what to replace the x with. So instead of x squared, I'm going to replace that with the three, okay, because to evaluate means to get the answer as far as you can, really. We should have a nice answer here. Order of operations, parentheses, three. Well, there's nothing to do there. Exponents, so I need to deal with three squared, which is nine. So I have seven times nine plus 25. Then multiplication. So this part's next, 7 times 9 is 63. And then we deal with um, the addition and subtraction. That really doesn't look like a 2, does it? Okay, so 63 plus 25 is 88. And that is my answer there. Maybe I'll change colors just so I can write the next one right beside it. So we have x squared minus 8x, but I'm going to replace the x with x equals negative 5. So I have negative 5, and now I need to square this. Now, if I put a 2 right here, that does not square negative 5. That 2 would only square the 5 because it's not next to this negative, and there's nothing to group them together. So you want to make sure here this should have parentheses around it, and if you use a calculator to help you, those parentheses are very important or else you'll get a sign error. So I have negative 5 squared and then minus 8 times my x, which is negative 5. All right, parentheses. There's nothing inside the parentheses to do, so then we deal with powers which is right here, negative 5 squared. Negative 5 times negative 5 is positive 25. Now, if you're using a calculator, you would only get that if you put those parentheses around it. So they're, they're very important. Then here, since there's nothing to do and there's no powers, we can go ahead and do this multiplication because right after powers or exponents, there's your multiply and divide. So negative 8 times negative 5 would be positive 40. And when we add that, we have positive 65. It's kind of funny how it knows I'm trying to draw a box, even though I can't. Okay, so we have one more of those to do. 
just kind of simplify that. Now I'm going to switch back to red. So again, I'm looking at that third problem that's on uh, that left-hand slide there, x squared plus 7x minus 4, but I know x is 6, so I'm going to put a 6 in every place it had an x. So I'll have 6 squared. Now here I didn't need the parentheses because there's no negative, but those parentheses are very important when you have a negative. 6 squared plus 7 times 6 minus 4. Now I could have used a dot for parentheses there, but I don't want it to look like a decimal. So that's why I did that. So we then our power is 36 after we do our because there's nothing to do inside the parentheses. 6 times 7 is 42. And then minus 4. Now addition and subtraction has to occur from left to right. So you have to do this part first. 36 plus 42 is 78. And then 78 minus 4 is 74. Okay, so we've done evaluate, which is simplifying our expressions. And we had to use the order of operations. If you don't use the order of operations, we won't all get the same answer. Now, simplify is slightly different than evaluate. When something says simplify, it means you are not going to get um, a final answer and that you're not going to have a number. You'll get an answer, but it won't be a number. Okay, what you're going to do is work it out as far as possible. You should expect when it just says simplify, you're very likely to still have an algebra expression as your answer. But when we simplify, you should be able to clear exponents uh, from parentheses. You may still have an exponent on a variable. You want to reduce any fractions, and you should not have any parentheses left in the problem. So we're going to begin by doing the 5 right in front of the parentheses. means we've got to multiply, so we'll take 5 times each of those terms. So 5 times 3x is 15x, and 5 times negative 2 is negative 10. Copy the plus 12x out here at the end, and then we're going to look for like terms, the ones that have the same kind of letters and powers. So 15x plus 12x is 27x minus 10. So that's our answer for that very first one. It's as simplified as it can get. So here, what I notice immediately is that I have a parentheses that doesn't have a letter involved in it, so I need to combine my like terms first. So 37 minus 5 is 32, and then that 7 is sitting in front of that. For my next set of parentheses, I will go ahead and distribute by multiplication. So I get 2 times 4y. 2 times 4y is 8y, and 2 times 3 is 6. Now over here, I need to do 7 times 32, which should be 224, plus 8y plus 6. And then I've got like terms. These are constants, plain numbers. I'm going to write down the 8y first, and let me just kind of bring that up and write the answer here. So we'll have 8y, and then 224 plus 6 is 230. And that's as far as that one goes, because those are no longer like terms, but we've cleared all the parentheses and everything. Okay, on this bottom set, I need to take 3 times each of those terms inside the parentheses. So I have 3 times negative 4x squared will be negative 12x squared. 3 times 5x will give me 15x. Now this is like a negative 1 in front, so as you're going through, it's like multiplying negative 1 through each of these things, which really will just change the sign. So negative 1 times 5x is negative 5x, and negative 1 times negative 4x squared becomes a positive 4x squared. Starting with the highest power, because I have some x terms, but I also have x squared terms. We want to do the highest power first. I have negative 12x squared plus 4x squared, that's going to give me negative 8x squared, and then I have a positive 
15x minus 5x, so that gives me a positive, or plus 10x. And those are not like terms, that's as far as we can go on this simplify. Now this is actually finishing up uh, that very first section. So let me move to a clean spot and we'll get that board back where we can see it again. Make it big for just a minute here. We have a mathematical model. Now when they refer to a mathematical model, what they've really done is they have taken a lot of data from statistics and figured out a math equation which pretty much gives you the same answers. If you put in an X, you would get the same Y value. Or here, in this case, it tells us F refers to females in the age group X. So for the same age group, you would consistently get the this, this same. F was for females, but it was the number of calories needed per day. Now these females, particularly, it says have sedentary lifestyles. So spending their days at a desk, maybe not doing a lot of exercise, not going to the gym. But how many calories, according to the model, how many calories per day are needed by the females between the ages of 19 and 30? Okay. Now, 19 and 30, ages 19 and 30, from my chart, I can go over here and I see uh, 19 to 30 is on that fourth set, and up above it, I see that that is group four. So what that tells me then is that um, X is four, because it was age group X. You see that in the problem. So now if, I, if X is four, and I need, to, I need to find the model, that's what I'm going to plug in there. So I'm going to do negative 82, and then instead of x, I'll put 4 squared plus 654 times 4 plus 620. Now, that is going to give me f. F is equal to that, and that has certainly got enough larger numbers in it. I don't want to do that in my head, so I'm picking up my handy dandy, uh, just a little handheld scientific calculator. Negative uh, 82 parentheses 4 close parentheses squared. So I didn't even hit the times key, it wouldn't hurt it, but I'm typing it in just like I have it written plus 654 open parentheses 4 close parentheses plus 620 equals 1912. So we'll go back over here and say equals 1912. Now this is representing the number of calories so, you know, a lot of times people will say, based upon a 2,000 calorie diet, I'm so tired of sitting in the dark, my office light drives me nuts. Um, but this, this particular group doesn't need quite 2,000 calories. On the other hand, it says, oh, there's my light. It says, does this underestimate or overestimate the number shown by the graph? So now we also need to go over and look at the graph and say group four. Now there's a pink bar and a yellow bar, but again, if you look at uh, the graph closely, it says the females are the ones for the pink. So I need to look right here at where it says uh, 2000. So uh, did that overestimate or underestimate? Well, this one was an underestimation. So the model wasn't exactly right. Again, when we make a mathematical model, we're trying to get it where we have a math equation that comes out really close. Okay, I left off my E. So under estimate. Okay, underestimated. But by how much? It wasn't much off because this one was at 2000, but my answer was uh, 1,912, so 2,000 minus 1,912 is going to tell me how much it's off. 
which is 88 calories. So that's not really too far off. That's a pretty good um, mathematical model, you know, one tiny little piece of candy and that's the difference. <laughs> okay, this does really finish up that particular lesson. So that's the end of 6.1.